our very first introduction of the potential <coughs> possibility will be a student performance. And to set that up for you, I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Kurt Alexander Zeller, who is the Director of Vocal Studies and Opera, who will present to you the copy of Beans of Clayton State, our student. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dr. McLeod, and welcome to Spivey Hall. Spivey Hall is one of the most renowned small concert halls in the whole world, and it is one of the jewels of our campus, where it plays a key role in the education of our students majoring in music and music education in Clayton State's Division of Music. This April, the students in my music drama workshop class did a production of Gilbert Sullivan's 1881 Operetta Patience here in Spivey Hall. And now four of them are going to perform a few excerpts from that show, uh, minus the rented costumes, which have long since been sent back to Minneapolis. <laughs> they are, from your left to right, second year music education major, Antonia Martin, as Lady Jane who is enamored of the pretentious poet, Reginald Bunthorn, played by third-year music major, Keenan Cutting. His rival writer, Archibald Grovner, is sung by fourth-year music education major, Kevin Pauly. And since there is no such thing as an operetta without a love triangle, both poets love Patience, the village milkmaid, played by third-year music major, Kayla Hart. <laughs> At the piano is our invaluable staff accompanist, Mr. Grant Jones. <laughs> the main conflict of the show revolves around the competition of Bunthorne and Grosvenor for Patience's love, but there's an additional complication, namely that Patience herself has no idea what love is. To her very practical mind, the behavior that everybody else labels love seems absolutely indistinguishable from, well, uh, insanity. Thank you. 
modernist poetry that she finds absolutely incomprehensible. But when Grovner arrives in the village, he is equally smitten with patience and proposes immediately in the quaintly archaic pastoral style that his poetry favors.
it'll be a very different kind of piece. You get a preview outdoors. It's Tom Smith and Harvey, Tom Jones and Harvey Smith's musical, 110 in the Shade. So we hope to see you all there. That was wonderful. Thank you, Dr. Kurt, Alexander, and Zella. Our students were phenomenal. They sounded like angels. <laughs> um, and so now we are going to hear from um, three other individuals. I'm going to introduce all of them at one time, and they will just follow each other. But one of them I'm really excited to introduce, and that will be the first person you will hear remarks from will be our SGA president, Lazarus Thomas. Following Lazarus, we will hear from the staff council chair, Spencer Emerson. And following Spencer, we will hear remarks from Dr. Eric Bridges, our faculty senate chair. Bless a new day, wonderful people. It is always good to see familiar faces in the crowd, and I'm happy to be here speaking with you guys today. Like I just said, bless a new day to the students, faculty, and staff, and all other wonderful individuals at Clayton State University's community. My name is Miles Lazarus Thompson, but you all can refer to me as Lazarus. I'm a junior here at Clayton State University, majoring in psychology and minoring in political science, and I'm also the 2023-24 Student Government Association President. I want to thank President Lewis for the opportunity to greet you all on this important occasion. And as we gear up for the start of a new academic year, I am excited to implement Dr. Lewis's and my vision for the university, which includes increasing student engagement, increasing campus engagement, and most importantly, increasing student retention rates so we have a better experience for our students here at Clayton State. SGA, most importantly, plans to support these endeavors by being more visible to our student body, connecting more with faculty and staff, and most importantly, responding to the needs and interests of our students. If SGA can be of any assistance to any of you guys, please do not hesitate to reach out by email, sga at clayton.edu, or contacting us on Instagram and Twitter at Clayton State SGA. I look forward to serving you all as a 2023-24 student body president, and pray that you all have a wonderful rest of your day. bodies working together. Good morning, Laker Nation. My name is Spencer Emerson. Again, I am the chair of staff council, but I am also the associate director of recreation and wellness here at Clayton State University. Thank you again to the president for allowing us the opportunity to address my constituents on the goals for this fiscal year. The staff council's original purpose was to provide support and service as a voice to staff at Clayton State through education, communication, and engagement. Today, we strive to enhance these purposes and match the increased needs of our staff and campus community. Communication will be a two-way street and intentional. This will be through our monthly general staff meetings, our newsletters, our increased delegate communication strategies. And this way, we'll be able to make the campus more aware of the important updates of our campus, of the important ideas of our campus, while also being able to listen and support our staff as needed. Engagement is going to be one of our focuses as well. Uh, not only staff to staff, but staff to faculty, staff to leadership, staff to students. Through collaboration with the Faculty Senate, we will foster a social interaction that will provide a campus-wide synergy, also including our faculty staff basketball game coming up this homecoming, so please sign up for that. When I think of engagement, I remember two highly engaged times on this campus. First, July 2016, the launch of an augmented reality mobile game had the campus buzzing and walking 
while well, students, faculty, and staff attempted to catch them all. That was the release of Pokemon Go. It's on the phone. It's really good. If you still want to play, hit me up. <laughs> Second, August 2021, a simple Peach Belt Conference mascot change found our campus enthralled in a voting competition against other campuses within the Peach Belt Conference to vote our mascot lock as the best mascot in the Peach Belt Conference. Lo and behold, this camp campus brought each other together. It was not just one person, it was the entire campus, and we won that thing. If you want to see the uh, plaque, it is in the Athletic Center. <laughs> also, speaking of engagement, uh, I recently got engaged to the wonderful fiance, Catherine, in July. <laughs> I will be letting you know where we registered. <laughs> So with all that being said, uh, we know there are many opportunities for engagement. We have a staff council look forward to this year, and we really look forward to everything we can do. Uh, we have great leadership on this campus. We have wonderful faculty, staff, and students, and so I'm really excited. So thank you again, President Lewis, for your leadership. Thank you, delegates, for your continued work. And thank you, all faculty, staff, and students, for making Clayton State great. Who we are, staff, staff, 
administrators that unravels the notion that Clayton State University is a well-kept secret. As a faculty member, I take pride in knowing that the work we are doing now is so simple and who our students are with the anticipation of innovative pedagogical practices that prepares them for a complex global society. The collective work that we do now will prepare our students to create solutions to the pressing problems that humanity faces. I leave you with this quote from Zora Neale Hurston. There are years that ask questions and years that ask. I think now that we as an institution are in the beginning of years that ask. Thank you. Can we pass the collection? <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Dr. Bridges. Thank you, Lazarus, and thank you, Spencer, for your remarks. Um, at this point, I want to introduce um, our new cabinet members. And it, it, there's this quote by Martin Luther King, and he says that you don't have to see the entire staircase in order to take the first step. And to my, I want to introduce to you our new colleagues that are taking this first step in creating new realities, new water for Clayton State University, in no particular order. Um, when I call your name, if you would stand and face the audience and remain standing until all of the names are called. First, I'd like to introduce to you your Associate Vice President of Enrollment and Student Success, Dr. Ashley Sierra.
Rocky serving as a diversity officer for three years. He went into senior level administration after three years because there was what? There was something about this one. For the next 16 years, as the dean of students at Georgia Southern University, the vice chancellor for student affairs <coughs> at Indiana University Northwest, the vice president for student affairs um, at Armstrong, and the vice president of student affairs at Georgia Southern University, in 2019, he was tapped to serve as the interim president at Atlanta Metropolitan State College. Because you guys, there was something about this. And let me tell you, in presidential searches, it is very rare to be appointed to a position. So to be appointed without having to even go through the interview process, then somebody knew that there was Um, he was then named as the official fourth president in November of that same year. He has a passion for, for, for professional development. He participated in the Millennium Leadership Initiative through the American Association of State Colleges and Universities, through the Executive Leadership Institute for the University System of Georgia. And he additionally contributed professional development opportunities for others as serving as a faculty member of AALI, the American Leadership Institute. He participated in becoming a provost academy and creating student affairs leap at Armstrong State University. He has received several awards, most recently recognized as a 2021 Pillar of the Profession of the National Association of Student Personnel Administrators because they knew it was something about this one. He is also the recipient of the Paragon Award for the new president by the Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society because they also knew there was something about this one. And he is an active member in Atlanta Metro Again, the second time he was tapped on the shoulder to join Clayton State University as an appointed president by the chancellor. You all, you don't get that tap unless what? There is something about this one. There is something about this one. After a short video, I am proud and honored to present to you the president of Clayton State what does it mean to be a Laker? It means education doesn't just end in our lecture halls. We make sure it lives on outside our scenic campus. For local business, for big business, for our environments, for our neighbors, for those looking to help, for those looking for help, for future students, for those who are still students at heart. At Clayton State University, our mission is to leave a lasting impression on our students so they can leave an impact on you. Because for us, we're locked in to better our community. We are Laker Nation. We are Clayton State University.
supposed to be the the uh, best part, the loudest part. Um, and so we should have flipped the order. Man, those, those students were outstanding. Please, let's, let's recognize them. You know, as a, um, well, well, the summers are always tough for me on college campuses because it's a little different. And I'm, uh, and I will admit, I am an extrovert. And so all this in this room today gives me so much energy. So I am so excited to be here. And good morning again to everyone. This is, this is the first of what will become an annual, uh, an annual address to the Clayton State community about the state of the university. First, I would definitely like to begin with a note of gratitude. Uh, whether you are in this room right now or you're going to watch the recording later, whether you're a student, an alumni, a faculty, a staff member, a business leader in the community, or a community member, uh, I'm, I'm glad that each and every one of you are part of Lake, Laker Nation. I also want to take a moment to welcome the new staff, faculty and administrators who have joined Clayton State during the year. So if you joined us between August of 2022 and today, uh, if you can stand up, please stand up so we can see you. state's future and we're happy that you have chosen to join our academic community. At the end of the program, uh, please plan to uh, meet me in the lobby and I have a, a, a little gift and perhaps we'll be able to take a photo together. That's for all the new folks. Um, I also want to acknowledge a few of our Clayton State University Foundation Board members who are joining us today. Mr. Eddie Osborne, Mr. Tom Bowen, uh, Ms. Gail Cabrera, uh, Lada, Lada Chen, Chenin, Mr. Fred Hicks, uh, Ms. Helen McSwain, who is the chair of our board, uh, and Patty Sharma. Let's all welcome them. Thank you for your continued support. And I think Dr. McLeod said the plate will be passed today, and it's going right into the foundation. <laughs> and I, I also want to acknowledge the uh, the members of the President's Cabinet, the Extended Cabinet, the Administrative Council. Uh, these leaders represent all areas of campus and demonstrate the collaborative effort it takes to manage and maintain a thriving campus. And I want to give a heartfelt thankful uh, thank you to each and every one of you, all the faculty and the staff who are here today. I want to thank you for your dedication and your, and your hard work. We have employees who have been with us in tenure ranging from one day, it's, it's the first day for somebody in this room, uh, and there's some of you who have been here for more than 30 years. And so regardless of your role, as, as Lakers, we have a shared set of core values and a common vision for the future, and our focus on students is at the center of it all. So again, thank you for your efforts and for being the reason why it is truly wonderful for me to be part of Clayton State University. So now, I'm, I'm honored uh, to be here with you today to share some of our recent accomplishments, uh, to celebrate our milestones and the outline goals we have established as we prepare to move into the next era of Clayton State University. It's been a whirlwind of the first six months, but a, but a good whirlwind uh, for me as president. I spent a lot of time learning, getting to know people, and getting a better understanding of the culture and the workings Clayton State University. You know, I had the pleasure of presiding over three commencement ceremonies in the spring. Students that participated in these ceremonies were part of 1,333 degrees that were conferred last academic year, and we proudly welcomed those graduates into the ranks of nearly 30,000 Clayton State alumni. And so quickly, after, after a, a brief time on campus, I realized a great amount of potential that we have at Clayton State. But I also recognize we had some opportunities for improvement as well. So we really needed to invest in us. And I'm here to share and declare uh, to, to each of you today that the state of our university is solid. But in order to grow, 
we have to consistently work to improve. Clayton State is poised for growth that can surpass what many may think is impossible. But as the late Man Nelson Mandela once said, it always seems impossible until it's done. And we will get this done together. So let's, let's be honest. Over the past few years, the university has been us in a state of constant transition. And many were concerned about the potential instability in our operations, particularly at the senior leadership level. Well, as you can see, that is the past. The past is behind us. We, we hired a few people this summer, and we, and, and we are together as a team. And so I plan to be here for the long haul. And our leadership team is charged up and ready to work hard. So now is the time to reaffirm who we are and how we contribute to the betterment of our community. But before I talk about the future, I would like to explore some recent accomplishments. Since my last message to campus, I'm proud to say that we continue on a path of excellence. Last academic year, over 2,200 students were actively engaged in career services activities such as workshops, resume reviews, and internships. The College of Health is continuing its living learning community for nursing students, collaborating with three departments on campus to offer a well-rounded experience. The college also hosted a senior academy for health science and healthcare management students. It was a half-day event focused on interview skills, career coaching, and resume review to help students secure a position upon graduation. The College of Business is revamping its career spine program within the core curriculum to equip students with communication, team building, conflict resolution, and negotiation skills that are so necessary for our students. The Department of Psychology and the College of Arts and Sciences launched six new undergraduate minors to prepare students for a variety of career paths in the future. The College of Information and Mathematical Sciences, SIMS, has established two new concentrations, Computer Engineering and Computer Engineering Technology, to help foster that talent pipeline right here in South Metro Atlanta. SIMS also just wrapped up two summer camps that offer training in cybersecurity and coding to high school students and local residents. As college president, and particularly during this, this time of year, it's difficult for me to have a day or have a discussion without addressing enrollment. With it being one week before class starts, we have a little work to do to hit our goal of 6,000 students. We currently have 5,700 5,721 students enrolled today. Not paid yet, but enrolled today. <laughs> so we need 279 more for our goal, and we are still enrolling students this week through the One Stop Shop. The One Stop Shop is open this week, and our new online orientation. So there's still opportunities. Between Friday and today, uh, we enrolled 121 new students. So students are still coming. And so in an effort to shore up enrollment beyond that first day of class that I mentioned. Multiple areas on campus are working together uh, to establish a new way of using our mini semesters during the fall and spring semester to help enroll new undergraduate students who may have missed the application deadlines or for continuing students who want to accelerate the rate at which they persist towards graduation by taking additional classes. This new program will be called Next Wave. And since Next Wave is new, we, we don't know its full potential, but we have a modest target of 150, a modest target actually, 150 <laughs> new students and several credit hours from continuing students in the fall. This new group, this, this new program is just a prelude to what types of outside the box thinking will be expected in the future. And so speaking of the future, uh, the Strategic Planning Steering Committee has been working with a consulting firm to help us with research and development of a three-year strategic plan, uh, 2024 to 2027 strategic plan that will lay the groundwork for our initiatives in the foreseeable future. After initial discussions from, uh, with the Steering Committee and the focus groups, the firm and the Steering Committee have outlined some common themes uh, the following are just a few, it's just a few of those themes and some hypotheses. The first thing suggests that we have a need to invest in the community. You know, we need to get back out there when we had some transition over the past few years. I need to get back out into the community more. 
The next suggests for the university to align our academic programs with the talent needs of industry, while also equipping our students with credentials to help them obtain gainful employment while pursuing their degree, so right now, simultaneously. Furthermore, one of the early findings suggests that there is a need for outside-the-box creative thinking that meets the specific needs of Clayton State students, not other students, the needs of Clayton State students. Another suggests that we have some operational inefficiencies that could easily be addressed that would drive the momentum as well as morale, as well as increase morale on campus. The, these items might sound like obvious initial observations, but true engagement in these themes will take real change. You know, we can learn from our past, both, both good and bad, we can learn from our past, but if we don't want to repeat the difficult times, embracing change will be necessary. So as the strategic plan tagline states, we are transforming today for tomorrow. So when completed, the next strategic plan will also help us develop a unified voice and sense of mission to identify ways to instill a stronger sense of pride among the members of the Laker Nation and revive their vibrancy on campus. So stay tuned for more. And many of you have heard me say this before, that we're, that we're not waiting for our strategic plan to be complete to start working, to start right now. And so the leadership team, as Dr. Bridge has mentioned, has met uh, this summer at their uh, administrative workshop and have already hit the ground running and, and, and have been working diligently on the priorities that I identified for the current fiscal and the current academic, academic year. Those goals and priorities that have been identified are developing or to develop robust enrollments to raise student outcomes as it relates to retention, graduation, and career attainment. We need to hit targets and assist students in being successful, graduate, and move on to their career. Simple. The second is to generate resources to further support our mission through fundraising, grants, and research dollars. We need to help ourselves. We know what our students need. We know what our community needs. Let's, let's help ourselves by generating resources to do that. The next priority is to sustain and develop academic student programming, academic and student programming to meet demands of business and industry, a theme that you've heard before. And the fourth priority is to make Clayton State University an institution of choice in the metro Atlanta region. Institution of choice for faculty and staff who want this to be the best place to work, and an institution of choice for students who want this to be the best place for our students to learn. So, to that end, evidence of the progression towards those goals can already be seen in the development of our strategic enrollment management plan. And I spoke a bit earlier about enrollment. It can be seen through continued work on academic alignment to help us align the academic programs we offer with the needs of market trends and industry. And only one month into the fiscal year, I'm pleased to announce that we've secured over half a million dollars in grants and gifts. So I must say that the new academic year is already off to a promising start. Now, in reference to students, we, we serve a diverse population here at Clayton State. Many of them are underrepresented, many um, are from underserved populations. We are a reflection of the community around us. We represent a means for that community to aspire for more and to attain their goals. Ultimately, we need to embrace who we are, who we serve, and own the role that we play in educating the current generation in South Metro Atlanta. I believe that if we are, if we embrace who we are now, not only will we be the anchor in the South Metro and a catalyst for economic development, we will, we will begin to have that broader impact beyond the metro region, a broader impact beyond that region that many of us want to see in the future. So let us have the courage to say, and more importantly, do the things that need to be done differently in order to achieve continued success. What each of us contribute is meaningful. From academic and student affairs, to the dedicated workers and facilities, to the police department, um, and all of our other colleagues in business and operations, to enrollment, student success team, advancement strategic initiatives, and to our colleagues and information technology services who keep us plugged in and connected. We provide stellar student support and 
transformational education. So let's exemplify our commitment to this community every day. Let's continue to work to be the college of choice for Metro Atlanta. So I charge each of you to look to the future with confidence. Embrace the change that's coming. Be bold and diligent. Embrace the challenge. Be a leader regardless of what your title is. Be a, be a leader regardless of that. Continue to be passionate, dedicated people who are intrinsically motivated and you make up Clayton State University. So I'm, in, I'm excited about what the future holds and I look forward to building the momentum with each and every one of you here. In the words of Henry Ford, if everyone is moving forward together, then success takes care of itself. So let's move forward together. So thank you again, and I can't wait to see what the future holds. Lies in your hands. And with that, we are adjourned.